¿Cómo interactúo para saber si están viendo o no están viendo? No. De hecho, ya nos están escuchando. Pusiste iniciar la, la presentación. A ver, dame un segundo. Ya, ya están viendo tu escritorio, ¿eh? ¿Y tú ves mi presentación? Sí, nada más ponle pantalla completa, por favor. ¿Ya salió? Sí, ya, está, ya estamos bien. ¿Ahí o ahí? Uh, ahí está bien ya. Ok. Bueno. Entonces tú me dices cuando empiezo y qué hago. Okay. Good morning to all. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, Nirap, you know who is driving. Uh, thank you all for your time. Uh, let's wait only about two or three minutes and we're going to, to start this webinar, okay? Thanks. Well, uh, we are accompanied by the engineer Humberto La Vega. Uh, hello, Humberto. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Okay, Humberto. I think uh, we can start this this webinar. I give you the the control of this webinar. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. Hopefully, you are having a, a a quiet season. I know that they, nobody is, uh, you know, enjoying what we are living. But I, I think that we are becoming stronger and, and, and stronger. And this is an opportunity for us to rebuild ourselves and rebuild the way that we are doing business. So this is an opportunity for us in NIDA to provide you a new way to look at our product portfolio. And also, I know that uh, most of you are working out in the Caribbean. So I will be touching some points about how the business in the Caribbean looks like. I've been working in the security industry for more than 30 years, 30 years, and, um, and I have some experience to share with you this morning. So um, let me start. And um, I know that this is not a very interactive session right now, but I think that we have at the end of my presentation and the space for having an, a Q&A session. 
And uh, so looking forward for having some, a little more interaction, okay? So, and uh, over here, if I can move this one, okay. Uh, we have objectives uh, to cover this morning, uh, pretty much, I will be not talking uh, or touching the technical side. The technical side is more driven by the specification of how to install the product and how uh, to power the product and uh, what are the, you know, the differences in between one way to connect the product and another. Uh, I will be more focused and, uh, and to, to have an overview of the product line and what is exactly uh, the benefits of the features that you can use in your uh, sales reports. The most important is uh, for what purposes the, the products are, are uh, were designed and uh, what are the, the best opportunities that you have at the marketplace. Um, the very first one, uh, uh, let me introduce NIDAP. NIDAP is an uh, industrial conglomerate based out in Holland. And uh, the, the group has more a little more than 19 years in the market. Um, the divisions that we have in, in the company are uh, pretty much all based on technology. We have six divisions, and one of the divisions is the identification systems, the one that I am working with. And we have others such as uh, uh, products for uh, animal control, cattle. Uh, we have for library control, uh, retail stores control, and uh, lighting control and, and others. So pretty much uh, the experience of NIDA is based on two things or uh, the, the value proposition of NIDA is based on two things. One is in a very strong um, concept of quality and the number two is in a, a strong also engineering base that um, creates an, um, a very reliable uh, equipment uh, for you to be sure that you are really selling and proposing to your customers a very solid and robust solution. The products that we have in our portfolio, as you can see in the one that I will be covering this morning, are pretty much four, which I will be talking of. We have one more, that why will be just comment because it's coming out soon. We will be launching that new product uh, very soon. So I can give you some highlights, but not necessarily something that I can address right now. Um, that circle uh, represents the, the what is our pro portfolio. And, and you can see that we cover pretty much everything that is related with identify vehicles. So, and vehicles means not necessarily just the, the vehicle itself, it's also who is driving, uh, the drivers that are, you know, inside of the vehicles. And also we have an, uh, a products that fits and are suitable to use in some conditions like for handicap applications. And we will see one of those uh, uh, examples in, uh, in the next, uh, next slides. This is a kind of list of the different applications that we are, or we have had experience. Uh, one start or two starts normally are the ones that uh, are related, how fits, you know, the, that, uh, let's say vertical or that applications into our system. We have applications for military, airports, government parking, industrial, high-end vehicles, transportation, mining, and uh, education, healthcare, condos, multi-tenant, people, their access, arenas, car wash. For instance, in the case of multi-tenant, that's very interesting because uh, we have had some experience with uh, owners of Airbnb uh, properties. So um, you will see that we have uh, products that really would be helping you to discover another way to do business. Remember, uh, one thing, NIDAP is not a product that is um, that we can consider in the economy line. It's not an entry label in terms of the pricing. So we need to be sure that we are solving complex situations or situations where no others 
are able to help just because the complexity or the conditions of the installation. And um, that's why I will be uh, doing a very brief, um, let's say, travel with you guys into the Caribbean and to explain a little bit more about my experiences and how I can share with you. So there is the only island that normally we consider as part of the Caribbean, but it's not a Caribbean island, actually, is, is Bahamas. In, in Bahamas is, is a pretty much Bermuda, sorry, Bermuda. And, and, and Bermuda is pretty much uh, close to New York, that area. It, it is it's weird, but um, it's, it's one of the, the, the islands that we serve. I don't know, we have some uh, microphones open, and I just very kind, please, just to, to mute uh, your microphones. Thank you. Okay, so let me give you an example. Uh, what are the, the different kind of industries and business that are strong? Uh, probably you, you know uh, many of those. So my apologies, yeah, I am um, being repetitive on these considerations, but I would like to share something with you. So let's start with uh, Jamaica. And uh, Jamaica is very much uh, everything around tourism. And um, they have a very large complex and the opportunities there are related with residential complex, gate communities, uh, there are some activities in the port. Yes, it is uh, the most active city, Kingston and then Montego Bay. So the business is not necessarily um, hot. I think that the one that is really hot right now in terms of business is Trinidad, Trinidad and Tobago. One of the reasons why uh, is the oil industry there. So uh, they are under a lot of development in terms of uh, uh, industrial sites, uh, uh, distribution sites. They are working a lot on the port infrastructure. Uh, also, this is creating a more a well, wellness in, and there are more wealthy persons there. So um, they are developing more upscale kind of uh, residence areas. So Trinidad and Tobago is in a very good opportunity for, for business. Dominican Republic is a mix. They have a very strong maquiladoras areas and they have an, a free ports or free zones. Uh, there are a lot of industries there and um, that's a very good opportunity. Plus the fact that Dominican Republic, and this is something that I will be covered also for you. Uh, and you will see how there are technical reasons why our products are a very uh, and a unique opportunity for you to solve and to cover certain applications that other cannot, just because the government uh, uh, assign or uh, yeah assign certain technical infrastructure for communications to a private company, and with that move, nobody can use certain frequencies. And you will see why I am talking about frequencies. So uh, jumping from Dominican Republic, uh, let's jump into Puerto Rico. I am not sure if you are working with the Puerto Rican, but Puerto Rico is a hub and is the most important, uh, is the center, the, the neurological center of the pharmaceutical industry in the United States. So pretty much most of the companies like Bayer, uh, Rocher, and others that they are manufacturers of medicines, drugs, are based out there. Uh, the activities that, that we have in terms of serving those companies is really uh, high. There are a lot of activities. For instance, one of your um, competitors that is ADI uh, in Guaynabo, that is one of the industrial areas there, is the most active branch in the whole um, uh, United States. So this is um, just an, a good reference for you guys that there is a lot of uh, dealers and installers working in the pharmaceutical industry down there. The conditions of the islands are very important in terms of uh, conditions of humidity. Uh, there is a lot of salt in the environment. And uh, obviously the corrosion 
that is uh, affecting uh, vehicles and products and, and, and equipment is very high. So that's why also it is important to consider the quality, the enclosures, the cabinets. And that's the other condition that you need to take in consideration when you think into offer and propose products to your customer. The rest of the island, I will not be touching uh, one by one. Uh, in the case of the British Virgin Island and some of the US uh, Virgin Islands, there are a lot of uh, companies that works uh, renting and management and managing other people's boats, for instance, um, these are kind of marinas. The marinas creates a lot of business for transportation in between one end of the island to the other. And they need to track the vehicles. So our products are very uh, functional for that kind of applications. And pretty much the rest are based in two things. One is um, high-end residential areas where security is one of the top priorities. And the second one is transportation. There is a lot of, uh, the, uh, of uh, a need to identify, to track, and to control uh, how the, the, the trucks are carrying, who is driving the truck. And you can say, hey, it's a little island, so it is no way that this guy or the truck would be, you know, going somewhere else. But the problem is not that this guy would be installing the, the truck. No, they are installing the merchandise. And, and there is a, lo a lot of smuggler around. So this is an opportunity for you to you not sell, uh, not only sell what we offer in NIDAP, you also have the opportunity to sell other equipment around and to create the full solution for your customer. So let's move into the, the the products, and this is um, our two main lines. Uh, one is based in a frequency of 2.45 gigahertz. It's something that we define as an active and semi-active technology. And then we have another one that is a uh, need up uh, 900 megahertz uh, frequency. The boat equipment or the boat uh, product lines are um, with the purpose to identify vehicles in a long range. And uh, when we talk about long range, we will be talking about 33 feet. And uh, we will see a little more on that uh, in the next slide. But uh, pretty much, I don't know if you can see my um, arrow or my pointer. And, and pretty much, um, the, the, the here is an, a gate, a barrier, gate barrier. We have the reader and we have the vehicle. So pretty much what we do is to read something that is here, that is captured by this reader and this reader send that information to a third party product or third party equipment. And that's the equipment that will be taking the decision. So at the end, our products are just purely a kind of accessories is the peripheral, peripheral devices that are capturing the information. We, yes, we do some discrimination. We do some um, um, filtering about what we are reading. And then we are passing through to other systems that will be taking the final decision. So in that consideration, let me show you also what is all this world about the radio frequency. Remember that I mentioned something in Dominican Republic that in Dominican Republic, we have the opportunity to sell our products because the government decide to um, do a concession to a private company to use the frequency where normally that products works. So most of the products that are um, similar to ours works in the 900 and 860 to 930. Um, a megahertz. So as just for giving you an idea about what is this meaning, we have low frequency, we have medium frequency, then we have high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, and then from a one gigahertz here and up until, until I think is 30 gigahertz is when we call 
microwave. So the rest is um, very well known as, um, in, for instance, the case of high frequency, probably you are related with uh, products like um, iClass from HID, that's high frequency, or MyFair, that's high frequency. Uh, we have low frequency, probably the same HID, the prox cards that runs in the 125 uh, kilohertz, that's low frequency. And, um, and then we have the UHF that is 900 megahertz, that is basically what we do and we offer, as you remember. And if you remember in my previous slide, I put here the 2.45, this will be working in the frequency spectrum of microwave, this in the UHF, ultra high frequency. And that little considerations are important sometimes because for instance, we have recently a case in El Salvador. El Salvador government did exactly the same. Uh, provide the concession of some of the frequencies to one uh, cellular, uh, 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 I mean a carrier, and uh, they ban the rest of the users to use that frequency spectrum. Uh, the good news is with our products, you can adjust that frequency spectrum and you can fit in, 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 you know, in a frequency area where you are able to work. Uh, if this does not work because the full 900 uh, frequency spectrum is concession, well, the good news is that you have the 2.45 gigahertz um, uh, products. So at the end, we have covered the two um, spectrum the UHF and the microwave, and that's a very good news when you have this kind of complexity in terms of uh, technical reasons. The worldwide RFID means that normally most of the equipment uh, for RFID, ultra high frequency, works in the line of 900. So uh, I will be sharing with uh, uh, Gregorio and, uh, and Miguel this presentation in order that you have a copy of, of, of the presentation because you can have a, a better reference about what are those uh, uh, frequencies and how it works in different parts of the world. RFID stands for radio, radio frequency identification, means that we are able to identify things using a radio uh, wave that basically what uh, the technology based on uh, RFID does. Okay, moving forward, let's talk about our first product, the transit. The transit is based in a frequency of operation of 2.45 gigahertz. Um, there is not option. We provide opportunity that you power the product uh, with an um, a power supply of 12 volts, forget it. Always you need to consider to consider the 24 volts DC power supply. That's the one, there is not other one. That's the one that I strongly recommend that you always use for having an optimal um, operations of the product. This transit ultimate provides you and uh, a long uh, a range of 33 feet, pretty much uh, 10 meters. And um, the whole point with this technology is uh, that you have the reader, you have the housing that helps you to mount the, the reader in another accessory that you can install in a pole. I don't know if you can see the brackets here and you can install in the, in the pole. And with this, you have a very easy and fast in the installation. The materials here are for outdoor uh, use and they work perfect in uh, the kind of conditions of uh, the Caribbean. I mean, again, humidity, some salt, obviously, you will see some decoloration with the time because of the sunlight, but the product is um, a high uh, reliable in that kind of conditions. 
we have a certain um, products that we call tax. The tax are the ones that you install in the vehicle that you will be tracking. So the readers will be reading the tax. And we have different tax for different conditions. And that's conditions we will be talking um, a little later. And, um, but let me back and forth in between these two, because now I think um, I need to go here for um, better explain the point. So again, we have the reader, uh, the, the, the back housing for installing, we have an uh, here in a bracket, and then we have the full accessory. So now we have properly installed the reader. We have some recommendations in terms of the high, it's important to also um, install the product with certain angle because in, in this kind of conditions, we need to have an, a view of the tag. So the reader needs to see, to look at, at the tag. And the tag needs to be installed in the front of the vehicle and uh, normally on the windshield. These four products are the ones that are used and install inside um, the, the wheel shields and inside the vehicle. The, the, four pro, the three products here, they have a uh, cup, suction cups. So they, you, you don't need to, to glue in or to stick. It's just only with a suction cup, you can uh, put um, the product or the tack on the windshield. And with that, you would be, um, been done for using the product in combination with the reader. This product here that I will be talking a little later is very important because this combines the capability of reading the tag, but also reading uh, um, a batch. So if you have, and let me, going here. Here, you can see that there is kind of a slot. In this slot, you slide your card. And that card that uh, is on a technology card, for instance, an HID or MyFair. And then you have a bottom here. The bottom here, when you push the bottom, that reads the card and uh, sends out to the reader the information of the card and the information of the tag. With that, you are matching the driver with the vehicle. And depends of the uh, access control system that you are using, you will be able to discriminate and to rule if that combination of driver and car are allowed to, to go in or to go out, depends on the situation. And this is a very powerful a gadget. Um, the rank, the, the, the conditions in terms of pricing is not cheap, is not, um, uh, you know, low cost, it is not. And we are talking about an, um, uh, the, the price of your dealers potentially could be something 170 something US per piece. But what is really interesting with this product is that you have a full uh, capacity of managing and control certain conditions. And let me explain further why. In certain countries in the Caribbean, the licensed driver is technology one. In some others, it's very rustic. It's very, you know, uh, basic. It's pretty much paper. But in others, you have uh, a smart cards that are wire, uh, wireless. And so in that case, in that case is you can use the driver license as part of the conditions on the control. And you can use that technology in combination with this booster for um, creating a kind of control plan for your customers. And this is something that we use in many opportunities with uh, buses, with uh, trucks in construction, 
trucks in mining, trunks in distribution centers, and everything that it needs to identify and um, the, the driver and the truck, this is our recommendation. We also have these batches. These batches are for person. This is something that you can carry as in a batch and will be working exactly the same way with this. Uh, the batch is a little thick or the card is it's thick. And the reason why is because this technology is considered as an active technology. Why? Because it's powered by a batteries. The batteries uh, are installed inside of the tax and normally it has a, a lifetime of in between seven to 10 years, depends on the conditions of use. But what is safe to say is seven years and um, is the, you know, the time that the battery will be working. In that consideration, these products, the Windows tax, the heavy duty tag is one that you use for installing in the outside. And this is something that we use very um, frequently for port uh, contain uh, for uh, identify containers at the ports. And that's a beauty, my friends, because you have there another opportunity for control, not just the truck, but the containers. And, and you can use uh, this kind of tax that normally are installed outside again and, um, and has exactly the same conditions in terms of, of lifetime expectance of 10 years, seven years, sorry, um, of use. In the case of this product that is a Buster, you can replace the batteries. So it depends on the use. Um, you can just replace it to have an alkaline um, you know, batteries and, and replace it, and you can go uh, without any problem. Okay, moving forward, uh, the, the most of the applications that we have are related with buses, utility and emergency vehicles. It's a very preferred solution for police informants, um, uh, corporations, why? Because the capability of identifying the police guy or the policeman, the officer with the vehicle that is driving for uh, uh, buses, but as well with the containers and ports. And, and this is a very unique opportunity in Mexico, for instance, we have right now, I think three ports where they are using our products for uh, managing the access and the tracking of containers and trucks in, in the different areas of the, the port. So that's a very good product. Uh, the other situation is because they are active, they have an, a very good behavior in uh, bad weather. I mean, in the Caribbean, we have two, uh, let's say factors that we always need to consider that are because of the storms, the hurricanes, and any other similar, is wind and water or raining. Uh, in those consideration, the distortion of the signal that is sent out from readers in most cases does not work properly. In our case, because of the technology and because it's a microwave, the length of the wave is very small compared with other frequencies. And that's why it's harder to be distorted, uh, to, to have distortion, sorry, because it's small. Uh, in, in when the wave length is wider, uh, there is more area where uh, you can, it can be affected by the distortion, in this case by the wind or by the, the rain. So that's another very good reasons why this option is um, one that you should to consider for certain application with your customers. Let's move and jump into the you pass. Uh, and here, as an, uh, you, my colleagues in the sales department, I need to share with you that these are difference 
in terms of uh, budget. Uh, this product is less expensive than this one. This probably is 1.3 times this one. It's probably 30%, 30% more expensive. But the, the conditions are different. This is pretty much working in the frequency of 900. Uh, in the case of many of the conditions that you will be having in the in the ports, uh, could be challenging, some of them, honestly. You can use it, yes. We have uh, products installed in, in that, those areas, yes, and works, yes. They are challenged, why? Because the RFID, the 900 megahertz um, frequency is very affected by two factors, metal and uh, water or humidity. So if the conditions are really heavy, uh, you will be having the, the, the equipment performing not in the optimal conditions. Uh, the good news is that our product is strong and you can adjust and tune the product in order that has the better of the, the functionality and the performance. However, in certain conditions, this is this should not be the preferred product to install just because of the price. And this is something that you, you need to remember because this will be avoid you a lot of headache. And uh, not only the U pass is a, a restriction or is a situation for us, it's for any other manufacturer for UHA. So if you think that the conditions of the weather, high humidity, raining, our presence and the restrictions for having you uh, serving or your customer serving their end users, please, uh, I recommend that you choose the other technology. So, okay, um, but let's cover this one. This one could be very effective in the island when you have distribution centers where you have uh, pretty much better conditions in terms of protect uh, the entrance. Normally you can have a kind of a man trap or duane or custom area in certain areas of the maquiladoras. So you can have certain help for having this technology working better in that kind of conditions. Uh, yes, this is passive, means that the most of the tax here all the tax here are uh, they do not use any kind of uh, uh, power so they are not batteries included it's just the antenna and the chip that's it and we have three options that i will be covered in the next slide first we have two options we have 16 feet 33 feet long range uh, 10 meters, 5 meters, basically. When you have conditions of a stop and go, this is the technology that you should to consider to use. What is a condition of a stop and go? The stop and go normally is in parking, where you can, uh, you, you, you need to do something, reduce your speed, your velocity of the car. And so that is pretty much you almost stop then go that's one two gate um, uh, gate barrier communities that's another application very common uh, probably the other one that could be very interesting is for universities and we have one of the largest universities in puerto rico uh, as user of our products and actually they have uh, the labels custom with a uh, custom artwork and um, that's very Need because we also offer that possibility to uh, provide you uh, your own design printed on the on the cards. There is some set of fees, fees, but the rest is at the same price. And uh, but that's also is something that we can do for you. Uh, the situations here of this baby here on the right hand side is an, um, a product that you can link using an IP connection. What I did not mention before is in this case, you have the possibility also to connect through an uh, IP network using an, a network board 
is as an additional accessory. But pretty much the way to connect these to, uh, sorry, uh, this one, to connect these into the access control system is through a WIGAN output, WIGAN communication. Uh, with this product, the transit, and also with the target, that is the largest of the two products that we have here, you are also able to connect these into a, a, with using an a, a IP connection. Also with the target, you are able to uh, attach an slave antenna. So you can cover uh, more area with the same connection, just adding a new antenna. And that antenna uh, is cooked and connected into this uh, unit. Why sometimes we need this one? Uh, let me refer to an application that we have um, in Palaway, I think, where in the highways, because uh, we have the capability to read at certain speed. Um, we are reading, covering more area because we have different lines, three or four lines, and we need to capture more, more, you know, more lines. So that's why we are using this option. One of the points that is very important to consider when you use this kind of products is that this product just read the lane that you want that they read because sometimes other products from competitors are very hard to adjust because they are reading more lanes or they are not reading properly because of uh, the angle or because of the range that they are able to read. So that's the other consideration that are important to observe when you recommend a product to your customers. The options that we have here are the same. Again, we have an, uh, batches, Yes, you can have cards with this technology, and I will be showing you for what, uh, using what reader. This is the, our typical uh, windshield tag that goes here. Remember that I talk about that the main enemy for UHF uh, 900 megahertz is metal and water. Well, when you have um, high top or high end vehicles, such as Tesla and some others, they have a shade uh, over here. That shade normally is plenty of antennas or wires or some metal. So if you install this windshield over there, uh, it will be very hard for this reader to energize because remember that these little tags uh, does not have any kind of power. So the only way that they are powered is through a uh, radio signal that is sent out by the reader, runs into the, the tag, and then the tag is um, alive and returns information to the reader. When um, you have these kind of vehicles, it is impossible because this signal is not captured, is not being captured by the tag. So in those cases, we have other options. We have an, a heavy duty that you can install normally in, in the bumper, or also we have uh, an um, external tax that you can install normally in, you know, in our camouflage into the, the lamps, the front lamps of the, the cart. It is not affected because of the heat, it's not affected because of nothing and does not reduce the efficiency of the uh, lights of the car. Uh, the UPass Reach is exactly the same product, is just with less range. This is the most popular in our line, not only because of the price, it's because of, of the applications. It's very reliable. It is uh, also for outdoor, uh, uh, uses and it, this is the options to go when you not need more than five meters of reading 
And um, this is, believe me, if you want to avoid you having headaches and complaint from customer in the island, don't go with other kind of products than the high quality like ours or the transit line, the 2.45. Remember me. Okay, um, moving forward, we have the UPAS access. Remember that I told you here that we have uh, batches, cards in combination with these. Well, those are um, used for this kind of purposes. Sometimes we have a kind of hands free uh, access. For instance, in these days, this is something that will be becoming very, very common. So I want to be identified. I don't want to use biometric because of my privacy concerns, but I really want to have an, a very nice uh, distance for uh, my, my batch being read, read, sorry, and to gain access. In the most cases, we have this um, solution with this, um, Reader, the axis is four to six feet. That probably is um, an average of two meters. It works very well. Not necessarily is an, um, a full country because you have to go in the direction. You have to, to, to show uh, your batch in direction of the reader. That's why the, the, the way to install the reader is very important because of the height. And uh, if you have these, for instance, uh, inside your pocket, uh, and in your pockets you have some metal, well, the efficiency of the reading is poor, and you will be no gain in the two meters that you expect. And um, so this is perfect for hospitals. Again, in Puerto Rico, for instance, we use, they are using the batch the UHF badge for gaining access into the uh, parking lots with this product. And they use the badge for going into the clean areas in the pharmaceutical complex. So they are very, uh, there is a lot of rooms where they are not able to touch nothing, but they need to have the control. So this is the way to go with this kind of product. The other conditions for these products is for uh, like handicap applications. It's very convenient. So you can install the tag into the wheelchair or in the motor chair or even in golf carts and in any other. Some people um, ask me if this could be or works good for a front loader. The front loader is a lot of metal, a lot. Yes, could work, yes, but probably the transit uh, is the better way to go in that kind of application. That is the other popular use in the ports and in the Caribbean because there is a lot of products of boxes and pallets moving from one way, from one point to another. This is the last product that I will be presenting this morning. This is an introduction that we launched last year. It's becoming very quickly one of the strongest products in the line. It's in a plate reader. So uh, you can use the plate reader for everything and when you have the plate, because if the plate is missing, you cannot read nothing, you know? So sometimes if you have in a high security condition, and you can use it, but if the vehicle does not have, you know, the plate, well, you cannot read nothing. And in that case, if there is a high security, you have to have the protocol or you have to have an, a backup system. So you can install also the transit or you can install also the UPass for having the two uh, system working in parallel in case one is not working because the missing of the windshield or if the other is missing because of the missing of the uh, plate. Uh, this Lumo reader, what is uh, important is that it has 
three points is plug and play. The software is self-contained, means that you not need to pay any kind of license, uh, software license per year. And also is Wigan interface. So if you can use this one as a plug and play, because also they have an, an output to operate a relay, and, and you can have an, a full solution just with one reader. Or you can install this with a third party access control software hardware, and you can have the full solution using uh, the reader. This product could be popular in the Caribbean, could be the reality, the, the reality is just in the large islands such as a Dominican Republic, potentially Puerto Rico, uh, and Jamaica could be an option. In the rest, is just uh, a convenient for certain areas for security. But honestly, the way to track the cart in the Caribbean, sometimes they, are, they do not have plates and they do not have, you know, the best condition in terms of the plates because if the plate is, is you know, bent or if the numbers are come out or are, you know, dirty, not necessarily as on the best uh, performance. However, if you have an application for uh, reading a license plate, the, reli the reliability, the performance of the product is outstanding. And the reference between the price and the applications is also very convenient. So this is what I have for you this morning. Um, I am now open for questions, if any, and I'm more than happy to, to look if you need to, that I cover a little bit more on other areas. Uh, thanks, Humberto. Uh, in your panel, you have uh, one question from Jorge Castro. If you can help us, please. Okay, let me see. Oh, I need help here. Yeah. Es en el panel del lado derecho viene preguntas, así viene descrito. Ah, okay. Ah. This is an, a question from Reginaldo. I, I only have one question. It says, can we get a copy of the webinar? The, the answer is yes. Uh, if we record this session, I don't think so. Or... Uh, yes, this is recording, yes. Okay, so the answer is yes. And I cannot see any other questions here. Okay. You can erase that questions and you are going to see the, the question oh, about, no, no, from yes, Jorge Castro. Yeah. Uh, I have a lot of questions here, sorry. But I need, I don't know how I can open it, all this one. Okay, there's a very little the question here. Uh, Could you help you me just read the question? question? Yes, please. Okay, it says about the EU pass target in order to do an uh, energy budget. Number one is what the consumption in million pairs when reading the UHF tag. I don't know. I really do not know is with the specific of that uh, in that question. I really do not know if the question is because of consumption is because uh, I don't know what is the reason of the question, but I can find out that uh, answer for you. So I will be taking this and Martin is in the in the webinar too. I don't know if Martin is able to, to, to talk. But um, it's normal, it's not a, a, a question that I know the answer. I will be taking this and I will forward to you the answer. No problem. Okay. Number two is, does this consumption in million pairs depends of the distance of the USA tag? But I think you don't have the answer too. 
No, because I really do not know if this question is related to if we create the little, um, what is the word? It's like a, a spring or a spin, um, I forgot the, the word, it's chispa in Spanish. I don't know if the concern is because of the, the chispa that normally could occur in um, uh, wireless communications. I don't know if the question is because of that or because of the consumption that is related with the power supply or in the case the power supply is um, running with an, a backup system. So that probably is the reason why the question has been uh, asked, I don't know. But I will be fine out that for you, okay? Okay, Humberto. Uh, and the number three from Jorge Castro is, how much time does it take a typical reading process in milliseconds? Oh my goodness. You are so technical. I well, uh, uh, again, it's very fast. It's really, really fast, and it's seamless for you. I don't know in how many milliseconds, honestly, but I am taking notes again about uh, the milliseconds and the milliamperes. So, sorry for not being specific, okay. but it's really fast. Well, Jorge Castro, uh, after this webinar, we are going to send you an email to uh, all the presence on the webinar. Uh, maybe we can t have a conversation more, more technical, okay? Uh, we are going to send you the, the presentation and the webinar as well. Uh, definitely. If you need uh, to have an, a, 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 a specific of a technical training, we also are able to provide that. And, uh, because it's more related with the, the functionality, the troubleshooting, you know, that situation. Honestly, I am not the right person to cover that part, uh, but um, I am more than happy to help to put the right person in front of you guys for, for covering that part as well, okay? Okay, and um, Victor Nicholson is asking about pricing. Uh, Victor, when we have our conversation via email, uh, we can send you the, the prices of all of uh, models, okay? What is very important that, that you consider is that we have the experience to deal in the Caribbean. So uh, when you really need to consult, we are uh, the vendor, yes, we are the manufacturer, yes, but we are your partner. And uh, please, call us, reach us, we have some experience to share with you. And I think that together we can get an, a very nice uh, projects out. Okay, Marcial Torres, yes, we will send you the presentation in email, don't, no problem. And uh, some clear spring it says, Humberto, I came out late, but I hear you mention it, British Virgin Islets and boats. Can you repeat it? I think you just said an example, right, Humberto? Yeah, could you repeat the question, please? It just says uh, he came late, but he heard you mention uh, the British Virgin Islets and boats. Oh, yeah. I think you just... uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, British, the British Virgin Island and the US Virgin Island, uh, obviously two separate countries. One is ruled by the North American, uh, is part of the US, obviously. And, uh, but in both, in both um, set of, or a group of Iceland, the main activity is around uh, the fleet management, boat fleet management. So there is a lot of activity for sailboats and all the triders and all the trucks that move the sailboats. Because normally these companies that are based out in Tortola, for instance, that is in the British um, island, they have a huge marinas and they need to move the boats from one point to another, sometimes from the airport and sometimes to, to one uh, uh, dock to another. And uh, is for them, it's very important to identify who is moving what boat, because the most, uh, the majority of those boats belongs to other people, 
does not belong to the company that is management the fleet because they rent the boats. So I, as an owner, are able to provide or to give them my boat for having them managing my boat. So that is one of the main business there. And the other business there is the procurement in the supply chain for all the people that are sailing. So there is an, a huge of trucks moving back and forth the whole day just because of the supplies for the boat's activities. So that's another opportunity for vehicle identification in those islands. I don't know if I respond to the question. Well, I, I think yes. <laughs> and we have a last question. Oh, uh, Claire Springer is, yes, it's, it's fine. Thank you, Claire. And we have a last question from Juan Calle. Uh, he says, any control access application with face recognition using masks? No, we are not uh, on that, uh, in, in that line of products. We are not uh, related with um, analytics for face recognition or any other kind of biometrics. So we are just uh, focused on vehicle identification for now. Another question, what is the advantages against competition? Well, pretty much against competition or the advantages against competition. Um, I really never been focused on talk on competition because I really do not know in depth competition. What is important to consider is two factors. Factor number one is performance. When you are dealing with customers in the island, every single thing that you do in the island normally cost the double as minimum everything is really expensive so when you sell something that is not reliable just because it's low cost and your customer will be having problems you will be having problems too and just for shipping cost and the cost of opportunity, you will be losing more money rather than you sell the right product from the very beginning. So that's one condition that I strongly that you observe, please. The second one is in terms of, yes, uh, problems with uh, power supply. And uh, there is a lot of uh, our, tech, our ele electronics are very well designed and with the proper uh, power supply and protections, you can have an, a very strong product out there. The outbreaks and the different um, alterations of the power supply in the islands is also something that affects very frequently everything, any, uh, a lot of kind of uh, equipment, in potential including ours. That's why we are very strict and put a lot of emphasis in how to power the product and what is the kind of power supply that we use. So that's the two parts that I strongly recommend that you observe. Definitely uh, not because I am telling you that we are better than competition. No, what I can tell you is that we prove that we are reliable and perform the best in the worst conditions. That's what I can, I can say in that regard. Very good. And another question. And the proximity readers installed at the Puerto Rico hospital works with any access control panels? Yes, any of our products are able to work with any um, access control panel that uh, incorporates Wigand outputs. So we, are, we have Wigand and pretty much 99% of the access control panels out there in the market uh, has a Wigan output or Wigan port. So the answer pretty much is yes. Perfect. 
In the case well, of Puerto think... Rico, in the case of Puerto Rico, just on a very quick note, Puerto Rico, because of the pharmaceutical industry, is very strict in terms of compliance. Means that not necessarily you can sell anything that you think in that industry. No, you need to to follow proper regulations. You need to follow proper, you know, uh, compliance. One of the most important uh, compliance to observe is in installations because they are very strict because of the fire, because of the contamination. And uh, there is a new, uh, it's not new, probably has five years out there, is the OSDP, the OSDP connection, or connectivity, is one that the whole pharmaceutical industry is going into. So that's a business opportunity for you guys as well. And for those panels that carries that OSDP, uh, port, uh, because this is something that it was created as a standard by SIA, and the pharmaceutical industry is really willing to take that recommendations or unify and standardize uh, that uh, industry running on OSDP just because of the security concerns of data. It's not cybersecurity, but it's related. Our products. Uh, Transit and UPASS now are uh, incorporated with OSDP as well. So that's an, another good reason for certain areas, for certain uh, industries, where our products is the good answer to your customers. Sorry for interrupting you. No, no problem. It's perfect. Well, I don't have, we don't have more questions. Uh, I think this is all. Uh, Thank you so much, Humberto, for this webinar. And once again, thank well, you all for your time and listen to, to this webinar. Uh, we will send you the presentation via email and we look forward to helping you in your future business. And Okay, thank you very much to all. Thank you. And stay strong and stay safe. Have a good day. See you soon. Adios. Bye. Bye.